if it, I mean, the only obvious conclusion to me is that the future global monetary stock of the world, that's a closed system, immutable ledger and all that is the lowest risk asset. And it seems to me every indication continuously for the last 14 years, and it's only becoming more and more clear because as Bitcoin gets older, there's less competition and it's getting stronger. You know, like it's extremely hard to have a threat to Bitcoin today. It's like, you know, look, look at China. China tried to ban it five times and they failed all five times. Hash rates back up to like 20% in China. It's like China is one of the most effective totalitarian states alive today and they couldn't stop it. And Bitcoin's at like 0.1% adoption. It's like whatever odds Bitcoin has of dying or collapsing today, those odds will collapse by tenfold in the next five years. And then they'll collapse again. It's like, that, that's a, I know this might sound strange to people, but the longer Bitcoin survives, its potential upside only increases and its risk decreases. You know, we're in a world where higher risk it equals higher return, more or less. But with, with the perfect money, with a closed system, it's the precise opposite. As its risk goes down, its potential return, its potential value in the future only goes up because it becomes more anti-fragile and it will have a longer time horizon in the future. So anyway, how, how could I be wrong? Um, I don't know if, if somebody can tell me how I'm wrong and they can convince me, I will pay them a lot of money. Like genuinely that I, I dare someone, please tell me how I'm wrong. Um, but I have no idea. I don't know. And that's frankly what well, look. scares me. <laughs> <laughs> to your point on the hack that's a great one just um and a lot of people i don't think realize this but the fact that bitcoin is open source it's such a huge monetary incentive to be able to hack something like this and it's like the entire market around the world no one no one can crack this no one can crack the code basically to unlock the bitcoins if um yeah. if it was at all possible so look there, there's always um yeah go on yeah, can I just add something to that? To, just to give one more metaphor, and, and then I know we should probably go here, but just to give one more metaphor, I really think will help it click in people's minds. Because I know I probably just did a lot of jargon stuff that new people wouldn't quite follow, but the metaphor I would give is that of a black hole versus a planet. You know, put Bitcoin aside for a moment. Think of our current financial system, okay? As soon as you suck liquidity out, you cause massive systemic risk. Okay, look at us today in 2023. Everyone's talking about recession. You know, the housing market has big red flags. The stock market's down dramatically. We've had one of the worst years for a diversified stock and bond portfolio ever. It's like, okay, all that is because we had a 2% reduction in liquidity of the Fed's balance sheet or, or like 1.8%, maybe not even 2%. I, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's like, okay, that's an extremely low um, reduction of liquidity. And the system is so fragile that it's like shaking. Okay, t take the great financial crisis, the GFC in 2008. It's like, what caused that? It's like just it, a minor error in, in you know, the, the fundamental structure of, of the economy pre-2008. And now that problem is even bigger. But that minor error, because the system was so fragile, it, it toppled. It's like a house of cards, you know. And so like a planet or like a star, the more massive you make it, the more mass you add to a star or you add to a planet, the less stable that system becomes because it's an open system, um, you know, like. Um, how do I put it a different way? You know, it's like the more weight you put on an open system, like a sinking ship, the more weight you put on, the faster it sinks. You know, the, the more energy, the more mass, or in the case of economics and financial systems here, the more economic value you put on that system, the less stable it is. You know, like, like again, let's go back to the FDIC and depository institution, that, that whole commentary. The larger you make that institution, the more fragile it is you know it, it's basically like a bubble that gets bigger and bigger and as it gets bigger and bigger it becomes more volatile and less stable and um you know but the difference with the closed system is that the more energy and the more mass you throw at it the stronger it gets again with stars or planets the more mass you add the less stable they become the more mass you add to a black hole the stronger you make the black hole and that's what people don't understand. They they live on these planets or orbiting bodies, and they look at this little black hole that that Bitcoin is, and they're like, "What is this thing? I don't I don't understand it. It, it doesn't make any sense to me." Blah blah blah. You know, it's probably going away. It's so small, like it's not possibly a threat. And, and my view is that you know, it's a that's a fundamental misunderstanding of what's really happening here with energy transfer. Yeah, sure, there's more energy in your planet than in this little black hole right now, but all the mass that's coming to your planet only makes your planet less unstable. It makes your star less stable and of supernova more likely. But all the mass that is flowing into that black hole 
only makes its rate of growth faster and it only makes it stronger and it only makes its eventual consumption of the planet you're standing on um, more inevitable and, and sooner and sooner in time. And so what does that mean for Bitcoin? Well, this is the honeypot problem. The larger you make a monetary network, the more valuable you make a political currency unit system, the greater incentive you have to corrupt that system and print money for yourself and your lobbyists and your constituents. You know, it, it's, it's, the honeypot, it's, it's the honeypot problem. The more valuable you make this um, open system, the more valuable you make this human uh, managed uh, network, the greater and greater you incentivize people to exploit it and the greater and greater the uh, eventual corruption of that ledger is, is going to have a trickle up or trickle down effect on the whole thing and, and the faster it's uh, go going to collapse versus Bitcoin. The more energy you put out, the more secure it becomes. And so anyway, all, all that to say is that sure, there's a possible scenario in which Bitcoin dies. However, the bigger it's become, the more secure it's become, which is the precise opposite of every other system we have today. The larger it's getting, the less stable it becomes and the more reliant we are on infinite quantitative easing and infinite money printing uh, that the larger it becomes versus Bitcoin. The larger it becomes, the more hash rate we have, the more miners we have, the more nodes we have, the more decentralized the network is. And it, it's all that to say is that all your models are destroyed, as Michael Saylor would say, and it, it's the complete opposite of everything our human brains are trained to expect. Because up until this point, we've been dealing with horses. And the locomotive does literally everything opposite we expect. It's the perfect horse, even though it has no legs, it eats no food, and you know it, it's the complete opposite of everything we've expected. And it, because of that, I'm afraid a lot of people aren't going to realize that they have to make the transition until the transition's already occurred. And you know, what do you do when you have a bunch of worthless horses? I'm glad you're taking Bitcoin seriously. You all should be taking your self-custody seriously. Where are you storing your seed phrase? Is it on a piece of paper? Is it on a sticky note? Or are you doing the right thing and putting it on a metal plate? My friends over at Steed Stamp are sponsoring part of this video. And on their behalf, I'm here to tell you that they have a really good product for stamping your seed phrase on a durable piece of metal that you can keep over the long term. This prevents against your seed phrase getting lost due to water damage, fire damage, and frankly, it makes it a little more weighty and makes it a little more difficult to lose track of. And it's better psychologically for peace of mind with having it on something that you know is not just going to last as long as a piece of paper, but it's going to last indefinitely. So if your Bitcoin time horizon is for the long term and your time rise for your seed phrase is for the long term, I highly encourage you to check out Stamp seed with their high quality um, experience in having Bitcoin seed plates for you. So go to the website. You can use my discount code in the description where you can get a discount off of your order of stamp seed seed plates. So it's a great company. You can get a great discount. Check out the link in the description and you can get your seed plate today. Thanks.